Welcome to A Pagan Ways, Blessed Be. Hey everybody, thank you for uh, checking out my channel once again. Um, I just want to do a quick uh, video uh, on somebody that I know you guys know out there by the name of Silver Ravenwolf. Um, there are tons of YouTube videos with uh, reviews on her books and things like that. And I just want to uh, just go over my opinion. Um, I don't have her books with me anymore, but I used to. When I was 18, I bought books and I bought them in order. Um, I bought them from a little bookstore in Riverside, California on Canyon Crest called Amanda's. I don't know if it's still there, but I should check it out and see. Um, great little hole in the wall. Very, very, very good vibrations in that store. Um, and I bought the image that you see um, on your screen to ride a silver broomstick. Yes, I went and I did that. And you know what? That was my foot in the door to the craft. I'm not going to lie to you. I think that um, about 8 to 9 out of 10 new Wiccans and witches um, when they are trying to get into the craft they this is one of the first books they have and there's nothing wrong with that because you're new and you don't know any better <laughs> and the reason I say that is because I feel that in essence that book misled me um, I developed a distaste for Christians for two, two to three years after that, fighting with my mom about it, trying to prove to her why the Christian faith was wrong and horrible and all the horrendous things they did to the witches. And uh, I, now that I am almost 28 years old, I know that I was wrong for that, and I based it off of her book, To Write a Silver Broomstick. I'm not for religious bashing. I am all for religious tolerance, and that is every single religion that is out there, every single philosophy and way of life, and that includes the Judeo-Christian faith. Um, I have to say that uh, in her book, To Write a Silver Broomstick, and I'm sure in her other books, um, she does a lot of Christian bashing. She uh, c commences to explain why it is that... Um, how, how the Christians uh, created the image of the devil and she makes it seem like they were uh, conniving and and rubbing their hands together to make this evil plan and, and it's just the way um, she the first two pa two to three pages uh, um, after the table of contents is like an introductory like a prologue uh, where she's uh, you know giving you like a forewarning basically she says if you are here to snivel at the feet of the god and goddess, then you close this book and throw it away now because they that is not acceptable. And there are other well-cultured religions that will open their arms to you and let you do that. Indirectly, she was saying, in my opinion, if you want to, you know, uh, grovel at the feet of the foot of a deity go to Christianity and you can do that okay and and it's just like wow that's that's how you introduce a, a newcomer to the craft that's nice um she commences to have other things in there uh, inaccurate history um uh, I don't like I said I'm doing this off the top of my me my head with my memory um for me to be able to quote that first part of the introduction was, I'm amazed with myself. Um, but yeah, she, uh, inaccurate, inaccurate history, um, uh, claims that, that just don't add up. And then she has a, a certain set of books that she gears towards teens. And it seems as though in, in the books and even in To Ride a Silver Broomstick, um, she is saying if you're a teen, basically it's like she's encouraging for you to, to be to be secretive and hiding and lying and and betraying and all of that. 
There's a difference between lying, betraying, and being discreet. If you have to be discreet because where you are, you cannot openly practice your faith, by all means, do so. At one point, Christians had to do that. Come on now, you know? Uh, Muslims had to do that, you know? Things like that. But, to encourage lying, like let's say the teen running off to join a, a coven that might not be safe for them because there are opportunists in every religion... Uh, that's not okay, you know, and she does seem to encourage that. Um, she has a book, uh, the second book that I bought called um, To Stir a Magic Cauldron, and the image that I have up there, that's what the, that edition that was published, that was the image. Um, at the time, that very sensual, seductive brunette, but I get, I'm guessing the first edition was not like that. It was a very calm, homely, kitchen witch looking uh, blonde female with a black cat on her right shoulder as she leans over the cauldron to stir it. That, I, I like that image better. This one, just, this, cur not current, because I know there's a newer one, I'm sure, now. Uh, just, you know, to me, that looks deceptive right there. We don't look like that. I, I don't practice what I do with my shoulders showing and... It looks like I have sex in my eyes, and I'm going to enchant you. I, I don't think witches look like that. I'm sorry. I just don't. Um, I didn't read more than four chapters within that book, and I couldn't even tell you what it was because I started losing interest. I started seeing things I did not like. Then, here's the following book. Uh, to, to light a sacred flame, I only read a few pages. Let me tell you, I ended up getting rid of these books. I did not, could not do it. The fourth book that I purchased from her, you're going to see it now, um, is uh, Witches Night Out. It is like a teen fiction novel. And the storyline is something to the effect of a, a group of four teens, high school teens, um, that what one of them, which is kind of the main character. Now, mind you, if you go to look at the Teen Witch book, I wish I, I would have uh, got the picture for it, but look up uh, Silver Raven Wolf's books or Silver Raven Wolf's uh, Teen Witch, and you'll see the image, the older image. You're going to see a brunette girl. You're going to see an Asian girl. You're going to see a an African-American girl, and then you're going to see a, a Caucasian guy with a baseball cap on his head okay I noticed that the front cover for witches night out was these same people okay I thought it was interesting um so yeah um so the main character which is that brunette girl with the curly hair I guess lost her boyfriend in a terrible car accident the night uh the year before and um some drama happens at the school where they have to end up calling a, a circle to get rid of the problem and one of these girl I want to say the main character her stepmom she's like the vil one of the villains or whatever and at the end uh, they call Hecate and her hounds if I'm not mistaken now mind you I only I only revere God and goddess mother and father I tend to I, I, I relate more with God that's where my connection is um, so I don't pray or worship or do workings with uh, any other deity by any other name except what I just said. So I don't, although I've done light studying on Greek pantheons, Egyptian pantheons, which are my favorite, Celtic, um, Nordic, uh, Roman, you know, Chinese, all of that, uh, Native American. Um, it just scratched the surface on each one, um, because I realized that wasn't my thing to ha uh, to do a deity type, you know, specific deities like that. But, uh, I guess Hecate has hounds, and, uh, they called Hecate to release the hounds on the stepmom, and in the, on the spiritual realm, on the spiritual plane, the, the hounds tore her to shreds, but the physical result of that was she had a heart attack. So that was how the book ended. Yeah, so that's her book right there. She has plenty of other books. She has a ton of other books. If you want to check them out, by all means, do so. I personally have no interest in reading her books anymore. After those first four that I had, I'm good. Um, but I'm not saying she's bad. 
she has offered some information that I still can remember that I could still use. Everyone in any religion and any faith has a lot to offer. And in our community, each sing every single one of us, we have something to bring to and to put in that bubbling cauldron uh, of power to spread out to the community to benefit and edify the spiritual path of each member of the Wiccan, witch, pagan community. Okay, it's just that there are opportunists at every door and you got to be careful and you got to choose for yourself. Some people like Silver Ravenwolf. Obviously, they like her enough that she has made a living off of what she does. But, you know... The stories that I've heard about people meeting her and her wanting to charge them $300 just to talk to her. That makes her look like a pagan opportunist. And that, you know, that we, we have a lot of those in this world. But, you know, make your choice. I'm not saying she's bad. Just be careful. Um, and all in all, I'm sure she's a great person. I am sure that she is a true genuine witch. I absolutely believe that she is. It's just that she might be an opportunist in that. That you being op an opportunist doesn't take away that you feel you are what you are. If you're if you're in a religion and you can you label yourself and connect to that religion, and if you just happen to have an opportunist heart, then okay. But nobody could tell you that you're not. If you feel you are that, don't let, you can't let nobody tell you. So she is a witch to me. She is a true witch. I do believe that. She is a, a, a wonderful person. I, I believe that. I just feel that she got a big head in all of this and her ego grew. So yeah, I'm going to stop here. I don't want a long video. It's probably already like five or six minutes long. Um, blessed be, as I always say, please, if you have any questions, video requests, anything on the topic of Wicca, witchcraft, and paganism, um, crafty items as well, I crochet, all of that, uh, how-to videos, anything, email me at paganways85 at gmail.com, or hit me up here on YouTube, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there, so again, blessed be, and see you guys soon.